What's going on everybody? I'm Johnny Brook. Welcome back to another Crafted Workshop video. And today we've got another kind of five tools for beginners video. So previously I had done one on kind of handheld power tools. You guys seem to really like that one, get a lot out of it. And so I want to continue that series. I am going to do one on those stationary power tools that you might want to upgrade to from those handheld power tools. I'm also going to do one on hand tools. So stay tuned for those. But today I'm going to talk about metalworking and welding tools for beginners because I know a lot of guys are interested in getting into metalworking now. It's becoming super popular in our kind of YouTube space. I know Benueta has done a big series on metalworking for beginners and just a lot of fun. I've been doing a lot more welding and metalworking over the last year. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it and I feel like it's really opened up kind of a new way for me to make stuff. So before we get started, I just wanna say that I'm not including welding safety gear and metalworking safety gear as part of this list. You should always wear a welding hood when you're welding, a welding jacket, all that kind of stuff. So not gonna really cover that in this video, but just know that you should obviously always wear your safety gear. So let's go ahead and get started with the first tool. The first metalworking tool, and probably to me the most useful, is going to be the angle grinder. So you can do everything from cutting steel to length, to shaping it, to grinding down your welds, to really doing almost anything you need to do when it comes to shaping and cutting steel. So angle grinders usually are only in the kind of 50 to $100 price range, so really inexpensive. Obviously, they go up from there if you get nicer brands, but for beginners who are just getting into metalworking, you can get one of the more basic angle grinders and you'll be good to go. Uh, I also would probably recommend a corded angle grinder versus a cordless if you were only gonna get one. The cordless are super convenient and obviously you don't have to deal with a cord getting in your way, but you will be burning through batteries really quickly. They don't usually have quite as much power as their corded counterparts and they are gonna be a lot cheaper because you don't have to buy that battery. Some of the attachments that you need for angle grinders are going to be a cutoff wheel. This is going to be what you're going to use to cut your steel to length, or if you're using a big flat piece of steel, you can cut out shapes from that. One thing with a cutoff wheel is you never want to use it to grind things to shape, uh, you know, grind down welds, that type of thing. You don't want to put any lateral force on these wheels because they do have a tendency to shatter if you do that. And you can imagine this thing is spinning at like 30,000 RPM and it shatters, it's going to be really, really bad. So definitely never use a cutoff wheel for anything, but kind of cut straight up and down. Some of the other types of discs you'll need are a stone grinding wheel. This is for kind of heavy stock removal. So let's say you've got a big weld bead on the surface of your steel and you want to remove it pretty quickly. This stone grinding wheel is a great choice. It is going to leave you with a pretty rough finish and it's also really easy to kind of gouge into the surface of your steel if you're not being careful. So you want to use these for basically bulk stock removal. And then once you've got the bulk of it removed, then you can switch over to a flap disc. And a flap disc is basically just a bunch of little pieces of sandpaper that are glued to a kind of backing disc. And this is gonna allow you to really refine that surface, kind of feather in those edges, and it's probably gonna be one of the last things that touch the steel prior to finishing and paint and that kind of stuff. Um, one other type of disc that you might wanna look into are these awesome clean and strip discs. Uh, this is basically like a really hardcore sponge that you can use to remove all that mill scale and other surface contaminants from the steel. So let's say you're putting a clear coat on and want a nice even kind of matte sheen to your steel and wanna get rid of all the gray a mill scale. This clean and strip disc is a great way to do that. Also, if you're going to be applying a metal patina and need to clean off the mill scale, this is another great tool for that. So that's tool number one. Let's go ahead and move on to tool number two. All right, the next metalworking tool we're going to talk about is clamps. So you probably, if you're a woodworker, already have some clamps, but there's some kind of specific use cases and features on metalworking clamps that you need to look out for. First of all, you really don't want much of any plastic on the clamp, especially the part of the clamp that's going to be touching the surface. Obviously, when you're welding steel, it gets really hot. So if you have any plastic bits here, they're going to probably melt to your steel. It's going to make a huge mess and nobody wants that. The other thing is steel is a lot stronger than wood. So you're going to need clamps with a lot of holding power. So these little C clamps, this is a tiny one, but these range in size, you can get huge ones. These are extremely popular in metalworking because they have a ton of holding power. Obviously they're all steel, so not going to melt. So these are a great choice for sure. Um, some other types of clamps that you might want to look into are some welding magnets. I mean, I consider these clamps because they hold things in place, but these are really nice because you can keep pieces nice and square to each other and they just stick to the steel and kind of keep them in place. And then you can add even more clamps and kind of reinforce them if you want to make it even sturdier. You can obviously do 45 degree angles on this. There are welding clamps that do all kinds of different angles. One slightly annoying thing is that any of the metal dust or debris is probably going to get trapped. So you want to look for a welding magnet with a good channel here. So you can kind of keep that out of the way, wipe it away and keep it from messing up your kind of square reference edge. So kind of along with clamps and something you might want to consider moving forward, maybe not necessary when you're just getting started, is some kind of 
of welding table, something to clamp your work to. Because if you are working on a metal surface, you can clamp your ground clamp from your welder to that surface and not have to clamp it to the workpiece itself. It's also a lot safer because obviously if you're welding on top of something wooden or flammable, you're gonna end up lighting it on fire, which I did quite a bit when I was using my previous welding table, which was just a big Ikea table. So welding tables are super useful and you can get welding tables with a bunch of holes in the top of it, which allow you to clamp things in the middle of the table. It's a lot simpler, easier to set up kind of repeatable fixtures if you're welding, let's say, multiple of the same piece in the same kind of orientation. You can really speed up your process there. So maybe that's not a beginner tool, but maybe it's something to look for down the line. All right, let's move on to tool number three. All right, so the next metalworking tool is going to be probably one of the most important, and that is your welder. So obviously there are tons of different types of welders out there at tons of different price points, and really the welder you end up with is going to depend largely on your budget. But let me just give you a few tips and recommendations on what I would look for in a welder, especially when you're getting started. So if you think you're really going to get into welding and it's something you're gonna stick with, I would look for a welder that does solid core MIG. And that means that when you're MIG welding, you're not going to have that kind of flux left behind, which is something you're gonna to have to clean off of every weld bead every time you do it, and it's just gonna slow down the process. Also, solid core MIG allows you a little bit more flexibility in the direction you're moving your puddle, whether that's pushing or pulling, and it's just something I much, much prefer to flux core welding. Another thing you might wanna look for is a multi-process welder, and what that means is it does different types of welding. So this machine here, this is the Power MIG 210 MP from Lincoln Electric. The MP stands for multi-process. This machine will do stick welding, it'll do flux core MIG, it'll do solid core MIG, and it'll do TIG welding all in one machine. So as you evolve as a welder, the machine can kind of evolve with you. So say you wanna start with flux core because maybe you don't wanna invest in the gas tank, which those can run about 250 bucks. So if you've got a tight budget when you're starting, flux core is a great option there. You can start off with flux core, kind of get a handle on welding, and then as you feel more comfortable and maybe your budget increases a little bit, you could step up to solid core, and then maybe down the line a little bit further, you decide you wanna start welding things like aluminum or stainless or other types of metals, you can start doing TIG welding all with this same machine. So I really am a big fan of multi-process machines. They allow you to kind of buy once, cry once, as they say. It allows you to invest early on and not have to constantly be buying and selling machines as your welding kind of improves and evolves. So again, this is the PowerMig 210 MP from Lincoln Electric. They are having a big sale on this right now. It's called the Rewind to 999 sale. Basically, this machine is normally almost 50 bucks. They've got a sale right now where you can get this machine for $999. Lincoln is the sponsor of this week's video and they sponsor all of my welding content. I'm a big fan of all of their products. So if you guys are interested in learning more, check out the link in the video description below. You'll use that coupon code and you'll save over 400 bucks. And I think it's a great machine to go ahead and get invested in. All right, so let's move on to metalworking tool number four. All right, the next metalworking tool is actually two tools and it's really going to depend on the type of welding you're going to be doing. So first are these weld which are basically almost like some pliers on steroids with all kinds of specific functionality specific to welding. So first of all, it's going to allow you to cut your MIG wire at the proper stick out, which is something you're gonna be doing all the time, very, very regularly when you're welding. So this little area right here in the center, you can cut your MIG wire and get back to welding really quickly. Also, these long jaws will allow you to scrape out the splatter from the inside of the cup on your MIG welding gun, which is again, something you're gonna to have to do pretty regularly. This little kind of knurled section in the center here allows you to take off your contact tip and reinstall them really effectively and easily. And this knurled section back here allows you to take off your cup in case you got a little Hulk smash and tightened it a little bit too much. It makes that process really easy. So welpers are something you're probably gonna wanna have a couple of just because you might misplace it or it's buried under a pair of gloves or something like that. And really, I never ever weld without these somewhere on my machine. As you can see right here, I've got a set of welpers that just live on the top of my MIG welder. The other tool is gonna be kind of optional. This is what's called a chipping hammer. And this is going to be used to chip away that flux that's left either when you're stick welding or flux core MIG welding. And basically, if you're doing either of those two things, you're going to become very good friends with this tool because as I mentioned in the welder segment of this video, every time you lay a bead with either of those processes, you're going to be left with a layer of flux covering up that weld bead. That layer of flux is what's shielding that weld bead from all the impurities in the air around us. And so after you lay that bead, if you need to lay another bead in that 
same spot or you're gonna be laying another bead that's going to overlap that first bead at all. You need to chip away all that flux or else it's gonna get worked into your puddle and into your bead and that's not a good thing. So chipping hammer, really cheap, but it's gonna be a tool you're gonna be using a ton if you're either stick welding or flux core MIG welding. And tool number five, the last of this kind of basic metalworking tools for beginners is gonna be a good set of metal specific drill bits. So these are gonna be something you use all the time if you're getting into welding or metalworking. Obviously, if you ever need to run a screw or a bolt through anything you've made, a good set of drill bits is going to be critical. Something else you might wanna pick up is going to be some cutting fluid, which is just gonna to help to keep the bits cool as you're drilling through the steel. That is a lot of friction. So using cutting fluid is gonna make your bits last a whole lot longer. Besides some kind of standard bits, some other things you might wanna look into are a countersink bit. This is gonna allow you to create a nice clean countersunk hole in any of your metal pieces. It's really nice to allow those screw heads to sit flush with the surface of the steel and just gives it a really nice finished look. So good quality countersink bit is definitely something that's very useful. And last, something else you might wanna consider is a tap and die set so that you can tap holes in steel. What I really like are these kind of combination bits. They allow you to drill the hole, then tap the hole, then countersink the hole all in one motion. So if you know you're gonna use one type of bolt thread really regularly, go ahead and invest in one of these guys. They're meant to be used in an impact driver, but they're incredibly useful. I used them a ton on that extension dining table I built a couple weeks back. I had to drill and tap like 40 holes on that table base and using this tool allowed me to do it way, way faster than a traditional tap and die set. So that's tool number five. All right, so those are the five kind of metalworking or welding tools I would recommend pretty much any beginner pick up. So hopefully that has been helpful for you. If you're at all interested in getting into welding or metalworking and have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, if you're looking to learn to weld and want a little bit more of a hands-on experience, look for a local tech college or some kind of welding school in your area. That's kind of how I learned. I found a tech college that offered night classes. I was able to take a multiple week long class there, get my hands on multiple different machines, try the different processes, and really Really learn hands-on about welding and I think that's super super helpful if you do happen to be in the Cleveland Ohio area that's actually where Lincoln Electric is based they do offer classes there that are amazing I was fortunate enough to take a class there a couple months ago and really feel like that has been the single thing that has improved my welding by far the most since I started so I would really encourage looking for a class in your area if it's something you're interested in getting into hopefully you guys enjoyed this one if you have any other welding or metalworking tools you'd recommend for beginners definitely leave them in the comments below I think this was pretty comprehensive. These are most of the tools that I use most often, but obviously there's a lot of other options out there. And if you've got the budget, you can add a lot more things to your welding and metalworking arsenal. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If this is your first time to the channel, I'd love for you to go ahead and get subscribed and ring that little notification bell. I put out new videos like this pretty much every week, sometimes more than one a week, like this week. Also, I'll have links to all the tools I used in this video, including that Rewind to 999 deal that Lincoln is running in the video description below in case you guys want to check those out. And last I do have these new t-shirts available through Teespring. They're available on all kinds of different merch, men's shirts, women's t-shirts, coffee mugs, stickers, all kinds of stuff. So I'll have links to those in the video description below as well. So thanks for watching everybody. And until next time, happy building.